I was working on a video about a weapon that I thought had about a 90% chance to break the Crucible, but I had to stop my progress over on that one because the Witch Queen brought us a new Hunter exotic that is 100% busted. And I really mean 100%. This thing is insanely strong and fun in both PvE and PvP. So let's take a look at how you can set up this absolutely devastating build with the new exotic and tell me afterwards, are the Stompies officially dethroned? The new exotic we're talking about today is the Renewal Grasps. This one you can get for free from beating the Witch Queen campaign. I think you need to clear it on the legendary mode, but don't quote me on that. I'm a little bit of a sleep deprived gamer over here. Oh no. Wow. Let's cover the PvP side of things first, and then we'll look at one of the most fun PvE builds that I've used in a long, long time. It's definitely one that I'm going to be trying in the Grandmaster Nightfalls this season, as well as the upcoming Witch Queen raid. These gloves buff your Duskfield grenades in two important ways. First, they increase the size of the Duskfield Dome. This is a nice quality of life upgrade, but really not game breaking on its own. However, the second way that they buff the wearer might have you smashing your controller or keyboard in PvP. They give you damage resistance in two ways. Any allies that are standing within the Duskfield Dome earn one stack of damage resist. And if your enemy is within the Duskfield Radius, they also deal less damage to you. And yes, these stack together, as well as also stacking with the Chains Fragment for some serious damage resist. More on that in a second. The gloves also have a hidden perk that creates a crystal inside of the Duskfield Grenade. This stacks with a touch of Winter aspect to create a massive crystal. While testing, we found that the damage resistance was a little bit wonky. The damage resist you get as a friendly player inside of the Duskfield Grenade seems pretty consistent with these gloves. As long as you're in the Duskfield Radius, you're a tanky boy. The damage resist you get from the Chains Fragment is the same as always. That is also reliable. But the damage reduction that enemy players experience while in your Duskfield Grenade seems a little bit odd. I'm not sure if it's working as intended or not, but the debuff that they see on screen only lasts for a brief moment, and while it's up, you're getting an incredible amount of damage resist. With these three sources all stacking, you can straight up survive a sniper headshot. But after just a second or so, the debuff seems to go away and you're back to dealing normal damage as an attacker, minus those other two damage resist sources. Again, I'm not sure if this is a bug or intentional, but at least for a brief moment, you're nearly unkillable in these Duskfield grenades after casting one, and then after that effect goes away, you're just extra tanky. Even if it's intended to work this way, the extra damage resist you get here is so powerful. It can really help you to stay alive in a sticky situation. And we've seen just how impactful damage resist can be with the stack Warlock Rifts. We also noticed while testing that the slow effect in the Duskfield Grenades was very unreliable. Sometimes enemies can even just chill right in the dome without getting slowed at all. Hey, Destiny Netcode is always an enigma. So to get the most out of this build in PvP, here is what I would recommend. First off, you want to pick the Revenant Hunter, of course. For the aspects, you're going to want to go with the Touch of Winter, which increases the size of the grenade and the crystal, and like I said, it stacks with the gloves to produce a huge crystal inside of the Dustfield grenade. For the other aspect, I would still recommend Shatter Dive. You're not trying to blow people up like Day 1 of Beyond Light, but the movement provided by this is super helpful still, and it also helps you to shatter those crystals instantly, which can be nice for some other parts of the build. Shatter Dive is just an amazing evasive maneuver and I think it's probably always going to be pretty powerful, and it doesn't even have a cost like the new Void version on the Hunter. By the way, I'm working on a video covering my favorite ways to play the new Void Hunter in PvE and PvP, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. As far as your fragments go, you're going to have three slots to fill with this build. First off, I would go with Whisper of Shards. This is going to give you grenade energy for breaking those crystals. You can also break your own crystal with a Dustfield Grenade to proc the effect. Next up, of course, you want the Whisper of Chains. This is going to give you that damage resist for standing next to your crystal, which also stacks with those exotic gloves. And finally, I would go with the Whisper of Durance. This increases the duration of your Duskfield Grenades. From a quick testing we did in game, it seems like the normal Duskfield lasts about 8 seconds these days, but the Whisper of Durance will buff that timer up about 2 seconds more to about 10 seconds total. And as a cool side note, the Whisper of Durance also buffs up the Shurikens for a longer slow effect. You can really use any weapons that you like with this build, but I would recommend trying something with a headstone perk like the IS Luna. This is the role that I've been using for both PvE and PvP, and it's really, really fun with this setup. Every time you get a headshot kill, you can then break the crystal to get your grenade back even faster thanks to shards, and you can also play around the crystal while it's up to get that extra damage resist from the Whisper of Chains. So what makes this build so good? Well, the larger dust field radius leaves some extra room for you to make some movement and playmaking potential. It's not drastically bigger than the original ones, but it's just enough that it might help you in those close quarter fights. Whisper of Shards combined with the Dustfield Grenades is going to give you one of the fastest grenade cooldown timers in the entire game. This means that those zoning grenades aren't going to be all that effective against you as a counter because their cooldown is going to be much longer. The damage resist you get with this build is very strong and it might help you with some fights that you would normally lose. 
For example, in a hand cannon duel, you may need to only land 3 headshots while your opponent needs to land 4 or 5 or even more headshots. Now if the damage resist provided when your enemies in the dustfield grenade worked for the entire duration that the nade was up, then I would say it's worth it to throw that grenade directly at the enemy. But since it seems to only last for a moment this way, I think maybe it makes more sense to throw the dust field near yourself and your teammates and get that extra damage resist in close quarters and also potentially slow the enemies while they're trying to push you. This means you're really helping yourself in those close quarter fights, but you're also helping yourself at the long ranges because you're going to be harder to kill. As promised, this is also one of my absolute favorite PvE setups right now and I'm planning to use this in many endgame content scenarios this season. Here's how I would recommend tweaking this build to work best in PvE. I want to shout out my friend Muthu here who helped me with this build and I'm going to link his YouTube channel in the description. It's definitely worth checking out and subscribing to. So still over on the Revenant Hunter, we're going to take the aspects Touch of Winter and Grim Harvest. We already covered Touch of Winter, but Grim Harvest is really cool for this build. When you defeat slowed or frozen combatants, it creates stasis shards. These work really really well with this build and we'll explain why in a second. For your fragments, with this setup you're going to have 5 slots and I would recommend Conduction, Rhyme, Refraction, Shards, Endurance. With this setup, you want your discipline to be about as high as possible because you're going to have your grenade up basically as often as you want to throw it. The gameplay loop looks something like this. You throw your dust field grenade to get the same triple damage resist as we mentioned from the PvP setup. Once again, ideally we want to use a headstone weapon to produce those extra crystals. With Grim Harvest, every time you kill a slowed or frozen enemy, it's going to produce those stasis shards. These shards are going to get sucked up right into you thanks to the conduction fragment. This is then going to activate the Whisper of Rhyme, which provides you with a small overshield that keeps growing stronger and stronger and getting refreshed the more shards you collect. It also provides you with some really great healing when you're not at full health. With Refraction, you're getting your dodge energy back every time you defeat a slowed or frozen enemy. And if you have a Bomber Mod or 2 slotted into your class item, you're going to get your grenades back even faster. With Shards, you're going to get your dust field back quickly thanks to the faster regen after smashing a crystal. And finally, Durance is going to help you keep those dust field grenades up longer, which is really helpful in the harder endgame content because you're going to have that longer damage resist. It all really works so beautifully together and you're going to be shattering enemies all around the Destiny universe with style. If you want to take this build to the next level though, you can also work in some elemental weld mods. Now this isn't required by any means, the build is very effective even without them. But they do add a lot of potential power, so here's how I would set it up. First of all, you want to start with the mod Elemental Shards, which is going to make those stasis shards count as elemental wells. Then you can grab the mod Font of Might from the Seasonal Artifact, which is going to increase the damage of your stasis weapons after picking up elemental wells. You can also slot the Elemental Charge mod, which is going to make you charge with light every time you pick up an elemental well, and you can pair this with High Energy Fire for more damage output or Protective Light for even more damage resistance. Protective Light did get hit pretty hard this patch, so maybe it's not worth running anymore though, especially with all the damage resistance you already have going with this build. If you have access to it, the Aegis Scepter Exotic Trace Rifle is really strong with this build as well. It's worth a try. If you do decide to use it, you might want to try it with an energy slot primary weapon to take care of those elemental shields on enemies, and then for the heavy slot, go with that new stasis rocket launcher. Honestly, this build is so fun to use, I'm going to have a hard time switching off of it. If you have any ideas on how to improve it, please let me know in the comments. And I want to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you want to have your name featured on this list over here, then head over to patreon.com slash pattycakesgg to join us. So far, I'm having a blast playing Witch Queen and I really had a great time doing the campaign. Let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see me cover this season. And up next, I think you'd enjoy my video series ranking every exotic weapon into a tier list. It's the video on the top right of your screen and also linked in the description.